Hello, my dear friends. Uh, Dr. Davan here, your ENT faculty, and I have got uh, the proud privilege of having Dr. Kunal, our pathology faculty. Thank Welcome, you, uh, Kunal. Thank you. Sir. And uh, uh, we are going to present to you the pathology, the histopathology of a very common ENT disorder, the rhinoscleroma, and which you know it's popularly called the woody nose, the hard external nose. And uh, I'll request Dr. Kunal to, you know, highlight the main important histopathological points about the disease. Uh, sir, uh, histopathologically, if we see, uh, there are two things sir, which are very, very, very important, which are diagnostics. And uh, they are your Russell bodies and Mikulis cells. So in this slide, what I've tried, I've tried to show uh, the Russell body here, which is this pinkish kind of deposition. And uh, it is basically uh, more immunoglobulins produced by the plasma cells. And that is getting deposited. So this is your Russell body. And here, uh, these all the blank spaces which you're seeing, sir, if I zoom it, so all these blank spaces which are which you are seeing, these are all your Mikulis cell. Yeah. Now, what is the uh, uh, basically the interpretation of having this Mikulis cell is that the the organism which is causing rhinoscleroma that is found inside this cell. So uh, to find the organism, uh, we can do the normal H N E staining, which is this. But there are some special stains which we are doing like pass and the gymsa. Yeah. Now, when we talk about the pass, if I zoom this image a bit. So, uh, so this is again a Mikulis cell because you are seeing this blank space and inside this rod like structure which you are seeing this, this is the Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis. And uh, likewise, if I go into the Jimsa, again, uh, we can have the same finding, uh, this. So here, again, this rod like structure which you are seeing, so this is your Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis. So this is what we see uh, histopathologically. Now, so we are grading rhinoscleroma histo histologically, three uh, stages we have. The first stage happens to be uh, a non-specific kind of stage in which histologically, which we are not finding anything. This is the cateral or the atrophic stage which we are having. Again, a question is there. And this stage, mein, sir, basically what we are finding, we are finding the foci of squamous metaplasia. Now, this squamous metaplasia, like sir, this rhinoscleroma happening in the nasopharynx. So, because it is happening in the nasopharynx, the normal epithelium is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So, here, because of the continuous injury, we have a change of the epithelium, that is the squamous epithelium. And this, what you are seeing, this is the non-specific inflammatory infiltrate which we are having. And uh, so you must be seeing patients who are coming to you with rhinorrhea and, uh, you know, recurrent uh, rhinitis. So all this happens in this stage. This can last for many years. Then this is the stage, which is the major stage. This is the granulomatous stage, the infectious stage proper, in which we are seeing the Mikulis cell and the Russell bodies. Okay, now, uh, yeah. And, and again, sir, uh, if we go uh, in this, this, these are your very beautifully, uh, you know, these are your Russell bodies which you are seeing, this pinkish deposition inside. And here, these are your Mikulis cell again, Perfect. The, the foamy mononuclear cells. Last stage happens to be the fibrotic stage. And in this, uh, basically, we are having a lot of scarring. Uh, which we see under the microscope, as you are seeing here. And uh, Mikulis cell and Russell bodies, they are generally are not found. And uh, you can have a lot of inflammatory infiltrate, which you are seeing these all small dots, which you are seeing, sir. These are all inflammatory cells. And the elongated cells, which you are seeing, these are your all fibroblasts, which are basically doing the scarring. Now, sir, once we are done histologically, uh, that what we are seeing in rhinoscleroma, uh, clinically, I mean, how do we interpret this and what do you do with this? So thank you, Kunal, for enlightening all of us on the pathology angle of the rhinoscleroma. We, we as ENT surgeons, we don't know much about that except the result body and the Mikulis cells. And uh, as uh, Dr. Kunal rightly pointed out, the disease has got three stages. Number one, the atrophic stage, in which the symptoms or the picture clinically resemble the atrophic rhinitis. So the first few years, the patient will be having, you know, the symptoms of the crusting in the nose and, you know, can say the wide roomy nasal cavities and the bad smell from nose, just like the atrophic rhinitis per se. But as the granulometer stage comes, the second stage in which you see the, you know, Russell body and the Mikulis cells, in that stage, the classical picture of woody nose comes. And the, when the woody nose means the hard external nose. So uh, you should be, you know, very careful in answering this question in exam, because if they say a patient presenting with the wide roomy nasal cavity with thick crust formation in the nose and bad smell 
it is atrophic rhinitis. Atrophic rhinitis diagnosis. But if the same question is twisted in such a way that they say a patient presents with the wide roomy cavity, with the nasal crusting, bad smell and hard external nose, then the diagnosis shift from atrophic rhinitis to the rhinostroma, which is also called the woody nose. Here I would like to highlight the woody nose is the term used for the granulometer stage only, this stage, granulometer stage only. But the third stage is stage of fibrosis in which a lot of, you know, scarring happens and disfigurement happens and that stage is called the tapir nose. So woody nose is the no name for the granulometer stage and tapir nose is the uh, name used for the fibrosis stage. Lastly, the drug of choice for this particular entity, it's a chronic granulometer disease chronic granulomatous infection. So the drug of choice is tetracycline and streptomycin. And we generally give for six weeks. And if they, are, they ask you the second line drug, the rifampicin is the second line drug. Wonderful, sir. Thank you for all the insight. And uh, we really hope that uh, the, it's a very important exam question and it helps the students. Thank you very much, Kunal. And we'll keep bringing, bringing this overlap of ENT and pathology in further sections. Thank you.